Hello everybody, this is Mr. Matthew again for Honors Bio video 5-3 and we're going to talk about how a gene provides the information for making a specific protein in this video. So in this we'll talk basically about uh, the process of transcription and translation. We'll also do a little discussion of what happens in a eukaryote versus a prokaryote and then some of the specific details of how within a eukaryote you will have introns and exons that take place uh, before you get to translation. So here we go. Alright, so in uh, this image we're going to talk about the basic process of transcription and translation and how they relate to gene expression. So uh, before we start, I'd like you to pause and think and answer these two questions. First, where do transcription and translation take place? And then second, which of those processes are shown here? Pause and think. All right, so hopefully what you came up with is that transcription is the making of mRNA from DNA by RNA polymer polymerase, and that takes place within the nucleus because DNA never leaves the nucleus, and that translation takes place at ribosomes out in the cytoplasm where the mRNA has left the nucleus, has associated with a ribosome, and is going to take place there. So which of these processes is shown in this diagram? This obviously is transcription because we can see an RNA transcript, that would be an mRNA, being made from DNA using RNA polymerase. So what would happen here is within the nucleus, enzymes would open up the DNA strand and would use one of those strands as a template and then RNA polymerase would make a complement to the template strand of DNA and then we would end up making the mRNA that can be used uh, out at the ribosome once it leaves the nucleus. So let's get a little bit into that process. But before we do, let's have a discussion of the differences between DNA and RNA. So here what we see is an image on the top of RNA and below that we see the DNA. And so first what are some differences between DNA and RNA? Well obviously DNA is double stranded while RNA is single stranded and also we see that the DNA molecule overall is going to be much larger. We're just going to make a small uh, RNA complement to a portion of the DNA so the overall length is going to be different. In terms of the underlying structure, at the nucleotide level, you'll see phosphate sugar base making up the nucleotides, but the sugar in RNA is going to be different than that of DNA. The sugar in RNA will be ribose as opposed to deoxyribose in uh, DNA. And then lastly, we will see that there's a different series of bases. Yes, you have A's, G's, and C's in both DNA and RNA, but you do not have a thymine in RNA where you have it in DNA, you have a uracil. So what that means is if there's an A on DNA, its complement of RNA will be a U. And we actually see a nice example of that here in this first base. Um, and obviously we could find other bases along as well if we're going to find the complement. All right, so the next concept that we're going to talk about here is the idea that when you make the mRNA transcript in a eukaryotic cell, those mRNA transcripts are going to need to be processed. So we will see up here on the chromosome, and then we see the DNA here that is integrated, and we see that it will undergo transcription. But that transcript is really only an mRNA precursor, and there will be regions of intervening sequences which we call introns, that are in between the sequences that will be expressed, or exons. So before the mRNA leaves the nucleus, what we'll end up seeing is that the introns will be spliced out, and it, you will be left with the final mRNA product that will ultimately be able to leave the nucleus and head out to make the protein. So let's talk about that mRNA and we'll also talk about another form of RNA called tRNA and how those fit in. So we've already just talked about the fact that transcription takes place here in the nucleus where the DNA serves as a template and we make an mRNA transcript for that. It will be matured as we slice out the introns and be just left with the exons and then the mature mRNA will leave the nucleus and head out into the cytoplasm. 
in the cytoplasm, it'll associate with a ribosome. And that is where the tRNAs will come in and will bring in amino acids that are appropriate for the sequence that is on the mRNA. So the tRNAs bring in the amino acids and the RNAs bring in the message. And we could also throw in a third type of RNA, um, ribosomal RNA or rRNA. And that is actually what builds the actual ribosome. All right, so let's talk about how we could actually go through that process of translation and how that works. So what we see here over on the left is a codon key. And the way a codon key works is that it is a universal key where if we read from the inside out, if we find a series of bases, we will find that if you read the first base, it's from the middle circle. And then you can look at what the appropriate second base is. And then you can look at what the appropriate third base is. And you could translate the mRNA into an amino acid. So for example, if I see the first RNA base on this upper right here uh, is GCU, I could come down here and look at my RNA uh, codon key and find that there's a G and then a C and a U and that will lead to alanine. So now what I want you to do is pause and think. I want you to use the amino acid key to translate the remainder of this codon sequence. I've given you the first. Find the next six. Pause and think. All right, so hopefully that didn't take too long, and let's reveal the code. And so, as we'd already said, the first sequence was uh, GCU, which leads to alanine. Second one is going to be ACG, and that's going to lead us to threonine. And then we see GAG, and GAG is going to give us glutamate. And then we have CUU, and that is going to give us leucine. Then we have CGG. And that gives us arginine, and then we have a G C, and that leads us to serine. The last one we see is a U A G, and U A G is one of our three stop codons. So those three black dots are stop codons. You see U A A, U A G, and U G A are our three stop codons. And so anytime you come across those sequences, that is where the um, ribosome will stop reading the mRNA and it will release the amino acid sequence from the ribosome so that it can fold up and form a protein. All right, so now what we have here in this diagram is an image of the sequence happening where we have the ribosome here, we have the mRNA here, and we have the tRNAs coming in bringing their amino acids. And so as you can see here, there is a growing amino acid sequence which is called the newly born protein. And we can see that the next amino acid is going to be coming in, in this location, with the next few tRNAs queued up, bringing in those future amino acids. So this is actually what happens in the process of translation at the ribosome, combining the tRNAs, the mRNA, and the rRNAs making up the ribosome. All right, so one of the important things before we wrap up here is to talk about the differences between the genomes of prokaryotes and eukaryotes. DNA is the genetic material in both of them, but it's important to know that prokaryotes have a few things about them that are going to be different. First of all, the genomes of prokaryotes are smaller, so and there's going to be fewer repeats of DNA sequences. We'll also see that there's only a single DNA molecule that you find inside prokaryotes. And they also have additional genes on independent circular or linear DNA molecules called plasmids. So these are all characteristics within a prokaryotic genome. For eukaryotes, we're going to see that they have large regions of non-coding DNA. So within our DNA, there's large regions that happen between actual sequences for proteins, and we have much more of those than you would find in a prokaryote. For prokaryotes, really most of the DNA is going to code for a protein or is going to be a, a very important regulatory sequence, sequence within the prokaryotic genome. We have large sequences that are repeating non-coding sequences. Also, much of the eukaryotic DNA is non-coding. A much higher percentage is non-coding. 
We have more regulatory sequences, more regulatory proteins, and more points of control within our genomes. They're much larger and they have a lot more uh, layered on. That's not to say that there's no regulatory elements of prokaryotes, and we will give some examples of those, but it's a lot more regulation when you look at eukaryotes and a variety of uh, regulation. We won't do much detail there, but you should be generally aware of that. And then lastly, we have multiple chromosomes, where as we said, there's a single circular chromosome or a single circular DNA molecule in prokaryotes. There are multiple chromosomes in nearly all eukaryotes. All right, so lastly, let's distinguish the difference between the end products of replication, transcription, and translation. Now, obviously, in replication, we see we, up on the top, we have DNA. We use DNA polymerase. We use DNA to make DNA. So the end point of replication is another molecule of DNA, going from one molecule to two molecules. At the end of transcription, we have made an mRNA molecule. We start with DNA and we lead to mRNA. And the end product of translation is a polypeptide or a series of amino acids that ultimately makes a protein, whereas we start with RNA and we end with a protein. All right, so hopefully that is helpful and I will talk to everybody soon.